Hello student, this is the second video of video series for chemical calculation. In the first video, we covered how to convert one unit into the other. I hope then you watched it and studied it. Okay, today uh, the topic is moles. Another very important uh, topic in chemical calculation, moles. But before I move to the mole concept, I decide to discuss these simple parts you learn in all of I know you learn these things in all level and you learn these things in even in unit one. But uh, to understand the concept mole, these concepts are very important. So because of that, let's discuss it briefly and go to the moles. First of all, mass of an atom. You know what atom is? Atom is the building block of matter. When you divide matter further, further and further and further, you end up with one simple uh, unit so that is the atom but now we know atom can be further divided into subatomic particle so then if I ask you this question what is your answer what is the mass of an atom how can we calculate mass of an atom it's simply this one atom consists of subatomic particles so if you then add masses of all the subatomic particles that will be the mass of one atom that will be the mass of one atom as example you can consider hydrogen atom you know in hydrogen atom uh, we get only one proton one electron and zero neutrons that's how we get hydrogen atom so then if i need the mass of one hydrogen atom i need the mass of one proton and I need the mass of uh, electron. Uh, you learn this one in unit 1. Mass of a proton is uh, somewhere around 1.67 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram. That's what you learn in unit 1. Mass of electron uh, somewhere around 9.108 into 10 to the power of minus 31 uh, kilogram. So once you add the mass of proton and electron, what you can get the mass of one hydrogen atom. When you look at these numbers, you see uh, the value is very small. The value is very uh, small. Then if you add all these two, we get again very small value. That means mass of an atom is a very small value. You know atom uh, is a very small particle, tiny particle. We can't see that one, we can't touch it. So then the mass of this one atom is very, very small. Sometime dealing with these type of very small figures is uh, not convenient for us. Because of that scientists uh, have defined then relative atomic mass for convenience. So. In periodic table, maybe you have seen this one. In periodic table, you saw hydrogen. But the value given uh, below hydrogen is 1.008. This is what you see in periodic table. So what is this 1.008? Is that the mass of one hydrogen atom? No, it's not the mass of one hydrogen atom. It is relative atomic mass of hydrogen. Relative atomic mass of hydrogen. Again, you learn this one in all level and in the first unit. So, how to calculate uh, relative atomic mass of an uh, atom? Simply, we uh, express the mass of one atom, mass of one atom, with respect to the atomic mass unit. Atomic mass unit is uh, mass of 1 carbon 612 isotope multiplied by 112 like this so this is actually uh, the mass atomic mass unit so with respect to this atomic mass unit we express mass of one atom then we end up with relative atomic mass right so in this case we end up with this type of easy figures not like this so therefore, working with the relative atomic mass will be easier compared to uh, the mass of one single atom, one single atom, right? So therefore, this is called, you know, atomic, atomic mass unit, atomic mass unit. 
So then you understood very clearly mass of one atom and relative atomic mass is two different concept, two different concept. Another different thing, another difference here, in the case of mass of one atom, there can be a unit. Once you add this one to this one, there is unit, gram or kilogram, here kilogram. But what about the unit of relative atomic mass? Does it have a unit of relative? Does it have unit? No. Why? Here mass of one atom is substituted in gram. Mass of carbon one uh, carbon 6 to L isotope again substituted in gram. Then gram gram will be uh, cancelled out. There is no unit. There is no unit. Sometime you may have seen it's uh, given something like uh, 1.008. Uh, we use now U or DA Dalton. Right, so this is U. So this part will be then atomic mass unit mean that part will be 1 U. 1 U. I'll explain how to calculate uh, this value in gram or kilogram uh, later within this uh, video we can understand it. I think you understood the difference between these two. Mass of one atom and relative atomic mass. Okay. Now, <coughs> Uh, next thing is this, when two or more atoms combine to form a molecule, the mass of molecule still uh, is very small value. Because if you add just two or three atoms with having this type of masses, so you again end up with very small value for the mass of one molecule. So therefore, uh, dealing with this very small values is not convenient for us because of that we define again relative molecular mass again not the absolute one it is relative mass relative mass but in this case we don't need this type of equation we don't need this type of equation to calculate the relative molecular mass you learn that one in uh, all level as example if i consider carbon dioxide molecule this is a molecule because there are three atoms one carbon and two oxygen three atoms then it's a molecule so then to get the relative molecular mass, what we need is relative atomic masses of these two elements. You know carbon uh, relative atomic mass 12, then there is one carbon atom in the molecule. You know relative atomic mass of oxygen 16, but there are two oxygen atoms here. Then addition of these two will uh, give the relative molecular mass, it is 44. So this is what I wanted to show you before we go to the... Uh, mole, I wanted to show you the difference between the mass of an atom and relative atomic mass. Two different things I told you. And uh, relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. We apply this one for atoms only. We apply this one for uh, molecules only. Another thing is, if you need mass of one atom, that means this value, if you need mass of one atom, you can multiply relative atomic mass by the atomic mass unit. When you multiply these two, what we get mass of one atom. So then uh, later I will explain this value in kilogram. Then anyone can multiply that by relative atomic mass to get the mass of one atom in a kilogram. Now we are ready to understand the concept mole. But you know there are several ways to understand the concept mole. This is one way. This is one way. I consider these four substances. You know calcium carbonate, it's a molecule because it has more than one atom. It's a molecule. So what we consider here, relative molecular mass. Now you know how to calculate the relative molecular mass. Just we add 40, 12 and 16 into 348. Total we get 100 consider 100 gram sample of calcium carbonate I take uh, relative atomic mass relative molecular mass of calcium carbonate in gram okay right next water when you consider water uh, 1 into 2 2 plus 16 then total 18 relative molecular mass of water is 18 but I consider now 18 grams of water. I consider 18 grams of water. 
Oxygen is also a molecule. Two atoms are there. Then 16 into 2, it's 32. Then I consider 32 grams of 32 grams of oxygen. Here magnesium. What about this? Is it a molecule? No, we just have only one atom here. In this case, we don't talk about relative molecular mass, but we consider here relative atomic mass. Then relative atomic mass of magnesium, we know it's 24. Then I consider 24 grams of magnesium. Okay, did you get this point? I consider sample of these four substances, but these samples have uh, relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass in gram right okay then if i consider 100 gram of calcium carbonate remember this represents one mole of calcium carbonate if i consider 18 grams of water this sample represent one mole of water if I get 32 grams of oxygen gas, that sample represent again one mole of oxygen. If I get 24 grams of magnesium strip, that represent again one mole of substance, magnesium. So, so all of these samples represent one mole. 100 gram of calcium carbonate, 1 mole of calcium carbonate. 18 gram of water, 1 mole of water. 32 grams of oxygen, 1 mole of oxygen. 24 grams of magnesium, 1 mole of magnesium. So whatever the substance you consider, take relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass in gram. So that sample represent one mole of the substance. So based on this relationship, you can be given some uh, questions like this. In the first question, it's given calcium carbonate. I consider calcium carbonate here. Your question is to calculate the mass of two moles of calcium carbonate. Let's see how to do that. First of all, I can construct this relationship between the moles and mass. You know, here relative molecular mass is 100. So I consider 100 gram of calcium carbonate. Then I told you that represent one mole of calcium carbonate. 100 gram of calcium carbonate is one, one mole. But now the question is this. You are given two moles. You are given two moles. So your question is to find out the mass of calcium carbonate. In this type of case, we can use the method I explained in the video one, first video in chemical calculation. What is it? Uh, maybe you remember that one. I asked you to write the ratio like this. Take given unit to this place, denominate, and uh, decide unit is here decide unit is here and then I ask you to multiply this by the uh, given unit finally given unit cancelled out but we get the desired unit how can I apply this one to this relationship you can see the question two moles given your question is mass then what is given unit mole what is the desired unit here gram given unit mole, desired unit gram. Then I write this relationship as that ratio. Okay, given unit is mole, but here it is one mole. Desired unit gram, but here it is 100 gram. Then we multiply by the given unit. Given unit is mole, it's given two mole. Now we can see mole mole cancelled out. We get easily uh, the answer 200 gram. The mass of uh, 2 moles of calcium carbonate should be 200 gram. Next question is about uh, magnesium. What you are given is magnesium here. Uh, right. The question is this. 
how many moles of magnesium present in 12 gram of magnesium that's the question then magnesium gram given uh, question is mole then we need the relationship between moles and uh, gram mass so then we know how to get it I just consider relative atomic mass of magnesium it's 24 but I take uh, 24 in gram we know that sample should represent one mole that sample should represent one mole now the question is about uh, 12 gram then how many moles if you are given 12 grams uh, then how many moles are present that's a question right look at this again I write this relationship like this here what is given unit gram what is the question number of moles then decide unit should be mole then I write this relationship as this given unit gram but here you have 24 gram decide unit moles but here you have one mole then we multiply by the given unit it's given here 12 gram now it's easy gram gram cancelled out so what is the answer 12 divided by 24 it should be 0.5 mole there is another method to do this type of uh, calculation in chemistry it's by using this equation we should identify these parameters so what is in its number of moles number of moles simply it's the mass given mass given mass of the substance given capital M is what it is called molar mass this is called molar mass so molar mass means simply mass of one mole of substance so how do we uh, determine the molar mass of a substance it's mass of one mole of substance then i told you uh, consider the relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass of the substance given so then if you consider the relative molecular mass or relative atomic mass in gram that sample represent i told you that sample represents uh, one mole so then it is easy to get the molar mass molar mass mean mass of one mole of substance then that should be equal to what the relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass but there is a unit for this one the unit here is grams per mole grams per mole so if you get the relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass in grams per mole what you get is the molar mass of the substance uh, this is not the SI unit you know SI unit for this one should be kilograms per mole SI unit should be kilograms per mole but normally we use it in grams per mole according to that the mass given should be kept in gram you know number of moles of the substance should be moles that's how we uh, substitute the values for these things <clears throat> let's discuss one application of this equation also okay in this question what you are given is glucose glucose you know the formula it's c6 h12 o6 what you are given the number of moles of glucose is given it's given 1.2 then we uh, represent these data using the correct symbol 1.2 moles of glucose given what else we know we know the molar mass since we know the molecular formula easily we can calculate the relative molecular mass relative molecular mass from from relative molecular mass we can uh, find out the molar mass in this case 12 into 6 1 into 12 16 into 6 once we add this uh, it becomes 180 relative molecular mass but this is in grams per mole uh, will be the molar mass now your question is to find out the mass of this sample mass of this sample okay then I subject mass here simple m simple m equals now simple n into capital m so simple n we know it's 1.2 moles capital m we know it's 180 uh, grams per mole as you can see mole per mole cancelled out here we get the answer like this 12 times 0 it's 0 12 times 8 it's 96 9 12 into 1 it's this and we get 1 216 so you can do 
the calculation uh, according to the previous method I explained or using this equation. There is another way to understand the concept mole. This can be understood uh, by considering the concept like, uh, you know, Dawson. You have heard about that, Dawson. So if I say one dozen of mangoes, how many mangoes are there? One dozen of mangoes means there should be uh, 12 mangoes. If I consider one dozen of, uh, let's say, elephant, how many elephants should be there? One dozen of elephant means there should be 12 elephants. Okay, 12 mangoes, 12 elephants. These two samples represent one, one dose. Whatever you consider, if it is one dozen, there should be 12 uh, units of that substance. So similar concept is found in the concept here, mole also. One dozen represent 12 units, then one mole represent 6.022 10 to the power of 23 number of units. Okay, so that means here, one mole, wherever you find one mole, that should represent 6.022 10 to the power of 23 number of units. If you consider one mole of mangoes, how many mangoes are there? This number of mangoes should be there. If you consider one mole of elephant, how many elephants should be there? This number of elephants should be there. You know, dozen just 12 units, but in this case, one mole means very large value, 10 to the power of plus 23. It's a very large value. So then in chemistry, we don't talk about mangoes or elephant, right? In chemistry, what we consider atoms, molecules, electrons, protons, bonds, right? So in that particular case, then, if you consider one mole of this species, it represents this number of units. As example, if I consider one mole of atoms, how many atoms should be there? There should be this number of atoms in that sample. If you consider one mole of magnesium atom, that sample should have this number of atoms. This number of atoms. If you consider one mole of molecules, how many molecules should be there? It's same number. This number of molecules should be there in that sample. So that means if you consider one mole of carbon dioxide molecules, there should be this number of carbon dioxide molecules. If you consider one mole of electrons, if you consider one mole of electrons, there should be this number of electrons. One mole of electrons should have this number of electrons. If you consider one mole of chemical bonds, one mole of chemical bonds, there should be this number of chemical bonds. So did you understand that concept then? One mole of anything should have this number of units of that substance. Using this relationship also, uh, we can have some questions. Let's go for these questions. Right, in this question, what you are given is, you are asked to calculate the number of molecules, water molecules present in 5 moles of water. 5 moles of water. We need the relationship between the moles and number of molecules here. Here we consider, you know, water. If I consider water, we refer mo molecules. <clears throat> we refer molecules, not the atoms. So therefore, in this case, this should be water molecules. One mole of water has this number of water molecule. But the question is now, how many moles? Five moles given. Your question is to find out water molecules. Then again, I can go back to the previous method to uh, get the answer for this type of question. This relationship is written as a ratio, but when you write the ratio, uh, given unit should be here. So what is given unit now? So what is given unit now? 5 mole is given, question is to find out this number. So 5 mole given, therefore given unit is moles 
here we have one mole and number of molecules then this is desired unit 6.022 10 to the power of 23 that's multiplied by again given unit it should be 5 moles now we can see mole mole cancelled out we can get the value easily uh, it's 10 11 30.11 into 10 to the power of 23 number of water molecules should be uh, present in this sample Okay, in this question, what you are given, hydrogen molecules given, question is to find out number of moles. In this question, molecules given, question is to find out number of moles. Then this is relationship between the molecules and number of moles. So what you are given here, we talk about we talk about hydrogen. Since it is molecule, this should be number of molecules. This number of molecules represent one mole. Then how many moles are represented by uh, this number of molecules? That's a question. Again, we can write this relationship as a ratio, but what we need here, uh, number of moles. Therefore, what you are given is this. 6.022 10 to the power of 23 has one mole. Then for 3.011 into 10 to the power of 20. That's your question. So when you simplify, uh, this cancel 2, 10 to the power of 20, cancel with this 3. So we get uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 here, half mean 0.5. So you can write it like 0.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3, what's remaining? Mole. Or 5, 10 to the power of minus 4. Mole. That's how we convert number of molecules into number of moles. There is an equation for this type of calculation also. There is an equation for this type of uh, calculation also. It's easy to use. So we should know the meaning of these things. You know, simple n represent again number of moles. Here capital N represent number of uh, atoms. If I consider magnesium, it should be number of atoms. Or uh, it can be number of molecules. If I consider carbon dioxide, that should be number of molecules. Or it can be anything. I mean, if I consider electrons, there should be number of electrons. If I consider ions, there should be number of ions. If I consider bonds, there should be number of bonds. And uh, L. Sometimes this can be represented. Uh, this can be represented by using in a also so what is l it is called avogadro's number avogadro's number or avogadro's constant so what is avogadro's number or avogadro's constant okay so how we define this one we define it like this number of carbon atoms present in exactly 12 grams of carbon 6 to L isotope. So we have a carbon 6 to L isotope here. This sample, okay. This is carbon 6 to L isotopes. Isotope. We take uh, 12 grams of this sample. Exactly 12 grams of this carbon 6 to L isotope. Then the number of carbon atoms present in this sample is Avogadro's number. It is calculated here 6.022 10 to the power of 23. Understand? So that is Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. Number of carbon atoms present in exactly 12 grams of carbon 6 to L isotope is Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's number. So therefore this is a constant. It is 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 so this refers one mole actually you know can you see that one carbon 6 12 here relative atomic mass of carbon is 12 we consider 12 gram of sample relative atomic mass in gram so relative atomic mass in gram is how many moles 
one mole. I explain it, one mole. Then this refers one mole. Therefore, here we have the unit per mole. There is unit for this Avogadro's constant per mole. And what about the number of atoms? Does it have unit? No, there is no unit. Number of moles? Yes, it has unit, it's mole. Okay, so you understood now in number of moles, in number of atoms, molecules, or whatever you consider, L Avogadro's number. In Avogadro's number, there is a definition and uh, there is a value and there is a unit also. So these things are, so I have given this information in the uh, short note. You can collect the short note uh, uh, from our Telegram channel. There is a link uh, in the description below. Using that, you can uh, get that short note plus uh, some exercises, questions related to this part. Let's discuss some application of this equation also. In the question, what we are given is number of moles of barium. The question is to find out uh, number of barium atoms. Moles given, question is to find out number of atoms. So what we know, number of moles of barium, we apply this one to a barium. Here we consider atoms, not molecule. Hmm? Number of moles of barium given, 0 0.3 mole. Right? We know another data, what is that? L, it's Avogadro's constant, it's a constant. We know that one, 0, 6.022, 10 to the power of 23, but unit is there per mole. Now your question is to find out N. N means here what? Atoms or molecule? It's atoms, because we consider barium here. Now I subject uh, number of atoms here, it will be uh, mole into Avogadro's constant. Moles are 0 0.3 mole, Avogadro's constant, is this value per mole. You can see mole per mole easily cancelled out. What we get here, uh, 3 times it's 6, 6, 0, uh, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 1.8066, 10 to the power of 23. There is no unit. That's how we use this equation to find out uh, number of molecules if the moles given. Right, so the opposite is also possible. If the molecule is given, you can find out the number of moles. If the number of moles is given, you can find out the number of molecules also. In this question, you are given uh, carbon dioxide, CO2 carbon dioxide. What you are given is uh, number of moles given, number of moles given here, 4 moles. 4 moles of carbon dioxide given. First question is to calculate carbon dioxide molecules, number of uh, carbon dioxide molecules. That is your question. You know, there is another data we know, it's uh, Avogadro's constant, it's this per mole. We know that data. So by using these two, can we find out uh, carbon dioxide molecules? Yes. In this case, you know, capital N represent number of carbon dioxide molecules. Uh, from the previous equation, we can subject uh, capital N like this. Number of moles given, 4 moles. Avogadro's constant, we know. Then mole per mole cancelled out easily. Uh, we get the number of uh, molecules 4 into 2, 8, 8, 0. It's uh, 24 into 10 to the power of 23. So this is number of carbon dioxide molecules present in 4 moles of carbon dioxide. There is another part of this question. It's about oxygen atoms. How many oxygen atoms are present in this uh, sample? How do we get this one? Then we need, 
since we know the number of carbon dioxide molecules we need the relationship between carbon dioxide molecules and oxygen atoms carbon dioxide molecules and oxygen atom we need relationship to construct that relationship what i consider here one carbon dioxide molecule one carbon dioxide molecule you know one carbon dioxide molecule has one carbon atom and how many oxygen atoms are there two oxygen atoms one carbon dioxide molecule there are two oxygen atoms and uh, then we have that relationship right so this is relationship you can have one carbon dioxide molecule two oxygen atoms that's the relationship we have now the question is this we know number of carbon dioxide molecules in the sample we calculated then question is number of oxygen atoms so then question is this now uh, how many oxygen atoms are present in this number of carbon dioxide molecules this is your question so we have this relationship now you have to find out this you know what to do now this relationship is written as a ratio but in that case we take uh, this is then given unit number of carbon dioxide molecules given unit then this part is the given one so i write it like this one carbon dioxide molecule you know given unit should be here and this is where we get desired unit what is desired unit number of oxygen atom then two oxygen atoms here one carbon dioxide molecule has two oxygen atoms then for the given unit you know number of carbon dioxide molecule easily uh, cancelled out what is remaining oxygen atom two times of this will be the final answer this is not 20 it's two oxygen atoms so it will be now 2 into uh, 8 you know it's 16 and 4 so this is how we convert number of carbon dioxide molecules into number of oxygen atoms some more questions given uh, in that uh, question tube you have to try those questions also so far we discussed then mainly two relationship moles and mass moles and number of atoms or number of molecules so we had question moles given to calculate the mass sometime mass given to calculate the moles we know how to do that we did it sometime moles given to calculate number of atoms or molecules sometime number of atoms or molecules given to calculate moles there can be some questions like this mass of the substance given you are asked to calculate number of atoms or molecule number of atoms or molecules given you are asked to calculate uh, mass of the substance we know how to do that one then just you have what you have to do here just combine these two relationship if mass given you can go to moles first from moles you can find out atoms if number of molecules given you can first go to moles from moles now you can go to uh, the mass of the sample in this question what you are given is sodium hydroxide sample okay look at this i take uh, consider this sodium hydroxide solid sample white color substance this is uh, sodium hydroxide okay right you know relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide is uh, 23 plus 16 plus 1 so it will be 
So I consider here 40 grams of sample. 40 grams of sample. Relative atomic, uh, relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide is 40. Then I take this sample uh, 40 gram. So you know this 40 gram then represent how many moles? One mole represent. One mole of sodium hydroxide represent. So if it is one mole of sodium hydroxide, then how many sodium hydroxide molecules are there? If it is one mole, you know, always one mole contains this number of units. Avogadro's number of units. But in this case, this number of sodium hydroxide molecules. Because my, I, I wanted to construct relationship between the mass and the number of molecules. Because your question is mass of sodium hydroxide sample given 4 gram. Your question is to find out how many sodium hydroxide molecules are present. So for that I need relationship between gram and the number of molecules. That's what I constructed. Here you see uh, we can write it now like this 40 gram of sodium hydroxide contains 1 mole. 1 mole of sodium hydroxide contains this number of molecules. Sodium hydroxide molecules. Now the question is this, 4 gram, then what will be the number of molecules? So we constructed relationship here, now we can get uh, the answer for this question. As I told you, I write this one as a ratio, but given unit gram, then here we have 40 gram. Desired unit number of molecules, then here we have this number of molecules. Then we multiply by the given unit, given unit gram, what is given here, it's 4 gram. Then gram gram easily cancelled out, 4 and 40 it's 10, uh, 10 and this cancel it's 22. So you can have the value 6.02, 2 into 10 to the power of 22 number of molecules. This question is about CH4 methane gas sample. It's a gas sample. Let's say uh, this is where you have then a gas sample CH4. This is a CH4 gas sample. Relative molecular mass of this carbon 12, hydrogen 1 into 4, 4, it's 16. Then I consider 16 grams of this sample. I consider 16 gram of CH4 a sample. Then a relative atomic a relative molecular mass of this is 16. Then we consider 16 gram of CH4. Then how many moles we represent here? One mole of CH4 represent. So if you get one mole of CH4 in this sample, how many molecules are there? CH4 molecules. If it is one mole, it should be Avogadro's number of molecules. This number of molecules should be there in the sample. Then I construct relationship between the mass and the number of molecules. It's this way. 16 grams of CH4 contains this number of molecules. 16 gram of CH4 contains this number of molecules. That's the relationship we have. So now uh, we go for the first question. First question is this, uh, <clears throat> mass of the sample is given again, it's given 3.2 gram. Your question is to find out the number of molecules. As you know this relationship, you can find out this easily. Uh, <clears throat> what you are given gram, 16 gram, but your question is molecules, 6.022 to 23 molecules. Multiply by the given unit, given unit gram, but 3.2 uh, gram. You can see it's a cancel, gram, gram, cancel 16 times, it's 0 0.2. So you get the answer here uh, 2, 2, it's 4, 2, 2, it's 4, 0, uh, and 12. We get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 1.2044, 10 to the power of 23 number of uh, carbon dioxide molecule. Uh,
this number of CH4 molecules. Okay, next question is about the total number of atoms in this sample. What we have now, number of molecules. We have number of molecules. Uh, your question is to find out total number of atoms. How do we get this one? Then we need relationship between CH4 molecules and total number of atoms. How do we get it? We get it like this. We just consider one CH4 molecule. So the molecular formula represent one CH4 molecule here. Then how many carbon atoms are present in one CH4 molecule? One carbon atom. How many hydrogen atoms are present in one CH4 molecule? Four hydrogen atoms. So what we need is now total. So total will be now, total number of atoms will be uh, one plus four, it's five. One molecule, there are five total number of atoms. One molecule, five total atoms. We have relationship between molecules and number of atoms, total atoms. So one molecule, it's five uh, total atoms. Now the question is for this number of molecules, 1.2044 into 10 to the power of 23 number of molecules. You know what to do here. Just we write this relationship as a ratio and get the uh, number of atoms. How do we get it? We need uh, what you are given molecules, then one molecule, one molecule, how many atoms? Five total atoms, then for this number of molecules. Molecules. You see then molecule molecule cancelled out what we get is now atoms. Here the number of atoms will be 5 times of this 20 uh, then 22 it's 20 uh, 5 to 10 1 and 6. As you can see here 1 2 3 4 it's a uh, 6.022 10 to the power of uh, 23 number of atoms total atoms. The relationship between mass and the number of molecules or atom can be combined, can be constructed by combining these two equations. As you can see, in number of moles, this in number of moles, then we can combine these two and construct new equation like this. Since uh, molar mass for a given substance is constant, and L is also constant, Avogadro is constant. If mass is given, you can find out number of atoms or molecule. If number of atoms or molecule given, you can find out the mass of the sample. In this question, what you are given is uh, this compound. This is actually the hydrous form of sodium carbonate decahydrate sodium carbonate this is water of crystallization the question is this what you are given here mass of this sample given mass of the sample given 2.86 gram 2.86 gram other than the mass we know some other uh, parameter here what are the other parameter we know uh, molar mass of this substance molar mass is equal to relative molecular mass you know Sodium 23 into 2, this is how we calculate it, 23 into 2 plus 12 into 1 plus 3 into 16. This part is this. When you consider this part, water, you know, 1 into 2 plus 1 into 16. This is it. But here, how many water molecules are there? There are 10 water molecules. Because of that, this should be multiplied by 10 to get it. But now, there is a dot here. Is it multiplication? No. So keep that in your mind. What we need is addition of relative atomic masses of all these atoms present in the molecule. Because of that, we add these two. That's how we calculate relative molecular mass of this substance. This will be 46, 12 and 48. It will be yes, 106. 
uh, this will be 18 into 2, uh, 10, it's 180, 180, 106, uh, 286. You know the unit of uh, molar mass, it's uh, grams per mole. And then we know Avogadro's constant, 6.022 to 10 to the power of 23 uh, per mole. These are the data we know. First question is to find out the number of molecules. Number of molecules. So we can use this relationship now. We know this one, this one and this one to calculate this. Then I subject capital N here. It will be mass over molar mass multiplied by Avogadro's constant. Mass given 2.86 gram. Avogadro's constant we know per mole. That's divided by the molar mass. Molar mass of this 286 grams per mole. As you can see, gram gram cancelled out, per mole per mole cancelled out. Uh, it's 286, this is 0 0.01. Then that's cancelled with this, it's 21 remains. So your answer is 6.02 to 10 to the power of 21. Okay, we just combine these two equations we learn and then find out. But there is another part of this question. What is that part? How many oxygen atoms? How many oxygen atoms are present in this sample? What you know so now, we know the number of molecules. So if we can construct relationship between number of molecules and oxygen atoms, number of molecules and oxygen atom, we can get, uh, we can use that relationship. You know here, if you consider one molecule, one molecule like this, you know here there are three oxygen atom. This part gives three oxygen atom. This part gives how many oxygen atoms? Is that one? No, it's multiplied by 10. You get 10 oxygen atom. Then total will be what? 13 oxygen atom. So you can say now one molecule one molecule you get 13 oxygen atoms one molecule 13 oxygen atom then for this number of molecule then we write that relationship uh, as a ratio you know that one uh, but we need or atoms what you are given molecules so we write it like this one molecule 13 oxygen atoms then for this number of molecules 6.022 10 to the power of 21 uh, molecules then molecule molecule cancelled out so what we get now finally oxygen atoms This number of oxygen atoms present in uh, 2.86 grams of decahydrate sodium carbonate. I promise you to calculate uh, atomic mass unit in this video. Now we are ready to calculate the atomic mass unit. So atomic mass unit means mass of 1 carbon 612 isotope 112. How do we calculate that one? So what we know, uh, Avogadro's constant we know. Molar mass of carbon we know and number of atoms we know. How many atoms present here? How many atoms we consider here? How many atoms we consider here? It's one carbon 612 atom isotope, one atom. So therefore, number of atoms here should be one. Now the question is to find out mass. Mass of one mass of one carbon 6 12 isotope for that sample then these are the data we have to calculate the mass we can apply the previous equation and uh, in that case you know mass will be uh, number of uh, atom divided by Avogadro's constant multiplied by molar mass number of atoms one Avogadro's constant 6.022 to 10 to the power of 23 per mole multiplied by molar mass it's 12 12 grams per mole. As you can see, per mole cancelled out. We get uh, the value 12 over 
6.022 10 to the power of 23 gram that is mass of one carbon 612 isotope but atomic mass unit means atomic mass unit i told you can be taken like uh, u that means a uh, one u here atomic mass unit atomic mass unit or you can say one u is equal to now not this value it's one twelfth of this value 12 over 6.022 10 to the power of 23 gram it's one twelfth as you can see here uh, 12 12 cancelled out this is one divided by this 10 to the power of uh, 23 when it comes up it becomes minus 23 this is one divided by this so it's approximately one u is equal to 1.6606 into 10 to the power of minus 24 uh, gram then if you need uh, to find out mass of one atom using this equation what you have to find out what you have to do here just multiply the relative atomic mass given by this value because that is a uh, atomic mass unit when you multiply the relative atomic mass by this number you get the mass of one atom in gram okay then i hope uh, you understood all the concepts very clearly if you didn't get uh, any point here it's better to go through the video uh, several times and then try to understand just understanding is not enough here uh, as i told you there is a short note for this one and uh, the collection of some questions related to this concept so it is available in our telegram group uh, so then uh, you uh, the, the link for the telegram group is uh, given below in the description uh, you can collect this short note and then questions uh, and try these questions we will meet again with the other video for chemical calculation so then uh, it's better to subscribe this channel and then click the notification bell once i upload the video you get the notification so you can then uh, study the other lesson also